All right, a little bit of a longer break than anticipated, but we are finally back for DPL 2018 Season 5 or Season 1 of 2018. I don't know who's keeping track of this stuff. We got Newbie versus E-Home. Two-game series, pretty important matchup here, but before we get into all the nitty-gritty details, I'm going to welcome in my co-caster once again. Claire, how you doing? Doing well. How are you? Yeah, doing well. Finally looking forward to getting into this Dota. I thought we were going to be starting like 20-something minutes ago. Newbie all trickled into the lobby. I think they were having some kind of... Uh, coordinator problem or something with Kaka's PC, so it's, it's finally sorted out, and we can get ourselves into this match. So in terms of the stakes, E-Home, they have to 2-0 here to move forward in uh, DPL. Newbie, they're through no matter what, but if they 2-0 this series, then they actually take uh, the number one spot in the group, which I believe moves them forward like straight into the semifinals or something of the the next round so well worth it here uh, every win back. pretty important for newbie ehome if they go down in the first game i guess that's that's it for them unfortunately uh ehome have been looking all right they i cast a game of theirs uh they lost the starletter qualifier 2-0 against lgd the other day but like you were saying earlier lgd have just been on Ten an absolute tear remaining. so i guess we'll see how ehome do in in this series yeah, their LGD has been on a Chinese rampage, destroying pretty much everybody that they contact, come in contact with. Um, Ehome, this is a roster that's... Uh, it's hard to say. First of all, are they still under that ace ban or whatever it's going on? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. Okay, yeah. So, obviously, due to like the problems in the past, they had some limitations on their tournament participations. Yeah. Um, but it's glad I'm glad to see them here. Uh, they're actually one of the stronger Chinese teams. Um, not just by title, obviously, uh, had some e home as a whole, had some former glory with different rosters. Um, now they've got Faith Beyond and Y Innocence, who are two TI winners. Um, they're actually pretty strong, but they, they again, like, they haven't had the tournament participation to truly demonstrate their worth and strength. Yeah, and I think people are looking at like CTY as well. He's been a well, I guess it's it's odd to say, but he's been an up and coming player for a while, right? Ten Everybody seems to have. Remaining fairly high expectations of him but still hasn't Five really maybe filled remaining. those shoes just yet so we'll see if they can pick up some more momentum as we move towards ti this year yeah uh, cty is good he's, he's yeah. generally just been like he's had that hype a couple of years ago and then he's just been consistently good throughout again no real major showings because i don't know something about him and the teams that he's on like i never hear anything about him being like a cancerous player or whatever but for yeah. some reason, he never really closed out with the bunch, and he actually has the mechanical skill, I believe, to to get to that tier one scene like consistently. So, whatever happens, happens in the Chinese scene. Newbie going with the opening that they were facing against earlier with the tiny Rasta. I mean, yeah, pretty strong combo. Yeah, this is like, uh, I mean, not exactly sure where this tiny is going to be played, but if this is the safe lane for Newbie, I can't remaining. really imagine too many off laners that get anything. Uh, against this Five setup they're both remaining. very very strong laning heroes and i think the other thing is that for newbie if they wanted to here uh, you know you can run the tiny in the off lane and then they can set up some kind of dual off lane which could even have the shadow shaman as a part of it and that would also be Newbies fairly scary uh, i like ehome's answer they've got the earth spirit should be able to rotate around a little bit their mid lane by the same token is looking pretty scary right you get rolled in on by earth spirit maybe you get kicked back towards the death prophet and uh, you're in some trouble at that point. Mm -hmm. The DP also is a very solid first pick, as well as a great response pick to Tiny. Of course, you have the Spirit Siphon, really good against the Tiny. He's a melee hero with a lot of HP. Um, the Rasta is just kind of a stable pick that doesn't show too much. It's a little more vulnerable in the laning stages, but, I mean, who cares about where your support is when you have a Tiny core, right? He's just going to be the, the ultimate factor in the lane that he goes in. Uh, it does look like Ehome's read right now is that maybe the the tiny is going to be played one or two. Uh, they do ban out the Bat Rider, so maybe thinking that there's still the the possibility that we see a, a KP hero. Actually, quite a lot of hate on some KP heroes here. I mean, the Naga Siren isn't just a KP hero for newbie, but we saw that in the previous series. We got the Puck being banned out. We got the Bat Rider being banned. Uh, so maybe they will just have to push him on to the, the tiny. But he's very capable on that hero as well. So I don't mm -hmm. think newbie are going to be too unhappy. Yeah, the thing with these first pick tinies is that uh, you should never really bother with the guessing game if you're on the other team. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think the one thing that they can assume is that they don't want the tiny mid against the Death Prophet because obviously that's a favorable matchup for the DP. 
But regarding the two side lanes, like Yubi will just decide that by the fourth or the fifth pick uh, at their leisure because this tiny can obviously go both places and still excel and do what he wants to do throughout the majority of the game, right? Just be a force that can pop somebody instantly, push out creep waves very fast, and of course, just be a very dominant laner overall. So the hero's design just allows this kind of flexibility. Um, henceforth, you know, the first pick. Chen! Alright. We, we talked about this a lot in the previous series and how it was potentially getting banned for no good reason, but this time around, Nubia are going to let it through, and Yihome will grab it. Uh, not the most usual circumstances. They do already have kind of your position four in the Earth Spirit, so they now have sort of two roaming heroes and are just going to have to pick strong, independent solo laners. Actually, this is probably the best duo in the game with the Chen right now. It's actually the Chen Earth Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how Liquid plays it as well. Yeah. So they'll usually open up with like a Gyro Earth Spirit or Gyro Chen, and then they would get like the other one that's available. And the thing with Earth Spirit is it gives you a lot of reach, first of all, right? He's basically a hero that's built in with a Blink Dagger initiation, as well as the guaranteed right clicks with the Orb of Venom. And Chen is actually one of the most dominant lane supporters too, right? Because he just has a creep. And right now, the Chen's usually, they don't actually just farm the jungle. They... They sit in the lane, usually in the off lane, and just disrupt the hell out of the enemy carry. Um, whether they can do that reliably against Tiny, I was about to say it's kind of difficult to say. But with the Earthshaker pick, like that's another hero that's not very good in the laning stage. He can get bullied. He's really there just for kill pressure and to alleviate that guaranteed kill potential right, with the Fisher. But he doesn't have that much presence as a whole. So uh, this just got a little better for Ehome, I'd like to say. Yeah, this is looking, it's looking fast, it's looking aggressive, Five they've got some, some good tower taking potential, some strong lanes. Uh, I'm personally not a huge fan of Earthshaker in the current patch, but uh, Newbie have been playing it a little bit, and Kaka just is really good at moving around on the Shaker and still managing to get things done in the early game. But similar to that Slardar that we talked about in the other series where a little bit slow, doesn't really have the, the guaranteed ways to farm up his blink, which he really, really needs, and... Yeah, the Ehome lineup just looks so fast, and they still have room to pick up some very pushy, very aggressive cores if they want it, right? You could still see something like a Dragon Knight or something fitting into this Yeah, lineup. yeah, exactly. Dragon Knight was one I was thinking of. The other one is Razor. Obviously, both heroes play quite well into Tiny, because they have the Chen that can guarantee one of those lanes. Um, I, I would say it's a pretty good pick in terms of an open pick as well, because they still have the last pick of the game that they can set up for, you know, like... Uh... So, for example, like, they pick DK here, and then Yubi just picks like uh, some sort of DK counter like OD. And then let's say Yihome decides to pick uh, the strongest hero in the game in like a PA, TA, something that's going to be good against Tiny and OD, for example. Um, they, they have some options because they have this open set with the Death Prophet, Earth Spirit, and Chen. Um, their lanes are looking very good so far. Yeah, and they have somewhat flexible lanes as well, right? We do see teams sometimes running the Death Prophet in one of the side lanes. Uh, that is an option if they feel like the mid matchup isn't really going to work out. But you know, are dipping pretty low into their reserve time here. Like you're saying, there's a lot of ways that this draft can expand from this point forward, especially with so many core picks still left on, on either side. So they got to make sure that whatever they grab here can't be too heavily counterpicked, necessarily. New bees turn and, to oh, All right, it's going to be Pugna. They are going really fast. <laughs> Uh, this game, so still not much of a front line just yet, but their tower taking potential is enormous. Yeah, so I was actually thinking life stealer on that spot. Uh, they do go for the Pugna and immediately countered by the sniper, which is obviously very good against Chen and Pugna, um, but susceptible to being let ran at. Of course, they have the Earthshaker deterrent, but I'm not sure how much it can stop uh, the aggression coming out of E Home. As you say, they're very fast. Uh, this is at this point, I would say it's kind of all in. Um, if Ehome, for whatever reason, come behind on the laning phase and they can't find an outlet to engage on the sniper or his tower, the tier one, by like 10 to 12 minutes, I would say this game is going to be a real quick like swing towards the other way in favor of newbie. Because the design of Ehome's heroes is that they're not really built to high ground by, by scaling, they're doing it by force. And there are only so many things that you can force against a lineup that's designed to counter you, like, you know, to defend that high ground. And Shrapnel, as well as a farm tiny, those are some of the ways to do it. Yeah, yeah. pushing high ground against newbie is going to be scary, right? You can potentially get remain. tossed in, there's the sniper holding the line the entire time, Shaker Fisher Five maybe breaking up remain. your lineup even further so you can't really play together. <laughs> yeah, this is this is going to be interesting. At Ehum, like you're saying, I think definitely needs to come out of the, the laning stage swinging and get all those towers down nice and early 
get their items ready to go so they can break the high ground. And newbie just even more spam, yeah. picking up the Underlord. So right now they have like the two superior scaling cores in the sense that the Tiny is pretty good this game, although DP is obviously very good against the Tiny. But the most important thing is they have the strongest hero so far in the Sniper. So Eom's last hero has actually has to be really good against Sniper right here, because if they don't have it something that's really good against Sniper, the only thing they're really going to do is just push. Um, I would say OD is looking really fantastic. Wow, not a pick I was expecting. Another That's a hero that's really good against Sniper. However, I don't know how good it against, is against Underlord, for example. Yeah, and super out of the meta at the moment yeah. as well. I'm, I'm guessing we're not, we're probably looking at some kind of battle specter, right? This game, maybe. Like, uh, I, I don't getting, know. Like, Vanguard Diffusal. Uh, I don't know. If you have a really good start and you get all the tier ones, maybe a, a Radiance is still an option, but. Yeah, at the very least, I would expect him to go something like uh, the phase into drums just mm -hmm. to get the stats buffer, get some mana regions so you can spam out the dagger more, uh, get your farm in, of course. Um, there are some variations. Some people, like Eternal Envy, for example, you would go to the Hood of Defiance. Um, some people just go Aquila straight into Radiance. Some people just like to do the stats, as you said, with the SNY diffusal kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, there again, like a lot of options, but it really comes down to like the laning phase. I think uh, if they can find a way to really bully the Underlord, which I'm not sure if a Spectre can do reliably, then maybe it's good. But only time will tell with this one. Yeah, we'll we'll have to see. It is sort of your one of your classic sniper counters, sort of yes. find him and uh, and kill him off. I was gonna. I feel like there are sort of two. Prepare sniper builds, and I think maybe the Spectre is gonna force the situation here a little bit. There's the plan on never getting caught sniper, which is where you're just building up damage, you kind of take your, maybe you buy some phase, you get a Maelstrom, you're just sitting back and you're relying on never getting caught if you get caught once you're dead. And then you also see kind of the, I would call it the no one school of sniper, where you buy treads and you actually <laughs> tank up and you get your BKB, and then if they go on you in a fight, well, you just pop BKB and you right-click them. So, I think Sniper can kind of play against Spectre in the right situation, but there's lots of different things that could happen for both of these two heroes with their, their builds and how they interact in this game. So it should be really interesting yeah. to see. Yeah, I'll be honest, like, just straight up, like, head-to-head, -head, the Spectre is very good at isolating Sniper, because also keep in mind, like, this hero is always going to be alone just due to his nature. Uh, yep. like long range and stuff like that and that's they just gonna shred him up but um at the same time there is some there is some good supporting cast on newbie right it's not like a, the underlord is gonna have some items tiny's gonna be able to blink in and toss targets there, there's a lot of things that the specter will have to watch out for it's not just simple hunt click dead sniper so yeah. we'll see how the chen plays out here they're actually doing the aggro dueling with the chen which is pretty much how every carry plus chen is played right now but again like specter being that carry i've never seen this before in the offing with the chen yeah, it'll be really interesting. Ehome will have to have a lot of attention on this lane, right? They can't really afford to leave the Spectre alone at all. Uh, so it'll be interesting oh, to see yeah. how this plays out. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, now, because of this Pugna pick versus the Underlord, they're going to have this matchup 1v1, and I feel like Underlord is going to destroy this matchup with his uh, superior base damage. He's going to get the Atrophy Aura, and then he's going to just have, like, 40 damage on the Pugna. Yeah, I'm interested to see how it goes, because... Past the laning phase, I feel like Pugna is decent against the Underlord, right? You got good magical yes, burst, yes. but the laning yes, stage, it definitely is. solo Underlord, very scary. Earth Spirit, and trade some hits here, he's going to be sent back by the Chen, doing everything that he can, just to get some damage out. But bottom lane's already getting shoved in towards the tower, this is kind of the beauty of the tiny. Well, also, they've sent those creeps back non-stop, yeah, so they're, yeah, they're stuck under their tower. Bad. The reason why the carries like the player is entirely because of this ability. Like he, he just sends these creeps back, and the carry always gets like a two guaranteed C like a creep wave, and then you can kind of deal with it afterwards by bringing a creep into the lane and harassing them. Yeah, it's really nice that Chen kind of has a way to delay things a little bit until he can actually get his first creep. Death Puppet's under the tower here. S Triple C just giving him the headshot procs, but taking some damage. He can't really afford to auto attack him though, otherwise he's going to aggro the tower. I don't even know if that really worked out that well for the Death Prophet in that situation. No, he's gonna, he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be pressed to go back here with low HP and is, does he have a soft coming on the courier? He has tangles. That play was not worth it at all. Uh, I don't know. He didn't do anything to the sniper there. Yeah. Actually, he did. Uh, the sniper missed a lot of CS under the tower. I just realized, but I, I'm not sure if that's a product of that play. 
Uh, yeah, I think it, it was partially. The creep wave built up a little bit, though, so I think it was. He was mostly CSing after the Death Prophet was already gone. HYM's lurking around mid lane. Cock is keeping tabs on him. He got run at a little bit earlier by the Hellbear Smasher, which is actually going to get brought down here. First, securing that last hit for himself and Innocence. A little bit unlucky. He finds a Centaur now. Up top, KP getting decrept somewhat, but like you're saying, doing just fine in terms of the CS. Two points in the Atrophy Aura actually early on for him. Yeah, Why not? he's gonna he's gonna start taking over this lane. I really don't think Pugna is one of the heroes that can stand against the Underlord and shove him out. Um, in the meantime, at mid, if you notice SCC's skill build, he's going the anti-Death Prophet build. Yeah. Two points up in the take game, hanging back. Death Prophet's doing her best to kind of keep draining health and keep the pressure on, but... And is putting quite a lot of pressure on SCCC's CS so far. Yep. They want Faith. Stomp is not going to connect. They're coming in with the dagger. They've also got the roll, but Kaka opening space with Fisher, And they might actually be able to go for HYM somewhat. Faith still got the Shackle Blows. Like he's just going to get right click down and Innocence draws your first blood. And you kind of, kind of getting what they were hoping for down here at, at bottom lane. Yeah. So this is honestly the biggest reason why I don't like this Earth Shaker. He has, he has like almost no lane presence whatsoever, right? If you see him, all he's doing is just draw, after he drops a Fisher, he just comes in with a couple of right clicks and he doesn't have an orb of venom. It's just not enough, you know. So this roster is going to constantly get bullied, especially now they have Innocence, a Innocence, get caught out here. Movie's just going to finish him with the tree toss. And I said that they were getting what they wanted down here at bottom, but CTYCS is actually not yeah, looking dude, all that hot either. Yeah, you can't lane against a tiny with a Spectre. I, I'm pretty sure this is just a very big mismatch. Um, Innocence also, he picked up the Seder, but he died for it. And obviously that's not really worth giving the tiny a free kill. Because they can't pressure him now, right? Like, a Spectre and a Creep, like, how is that going to pressure a tiny? Death Prophet getting pretty aggro on SCCC mid, does take a tower shot. But yeah, they just they can't seem to do anything about Wugi at all. More harassment on the spec. Kak is coming in from the side. We'll get driven away by Innocence. But Avalanche coming in. Mugi, is this just going to be a straight-up kill for him? CTY on the run. Pops the salve now. Is that going to be cancelled by Mugi? It looks like it might be. No, CTY jukes it out successfully. At the same time, SCCC does actually die over at mid. Looks like nice roll in from the Earth Spirit. Just barely surviving those last couple of tower shots. Yeah, SCC was playing that really cocky. He was actually like 30% HP the whole time. So it was just a very simple roll in. Uh, I don't even think there was a Spirit Siphon. Just to roll oh, in and some right face with the Siphon. You don't want to run up that hill. He's in some trouble, slowed down a lot. Mookie will come in trying to help, body blocking a little bit, but that's all he can really do. That was if you see Kaka, he's just bouncing back and forth. You see how he's like kind of lost into like regarding where he wants to be. Yeah, this is yeah. this is not great. Normally, yeah, I see Kaka when, when they pick the Shaker, they can you know, they get a Fisher block off, and then they can at least get one or two kills in the early game. But yeah, yeah. usually it's mid though, right? Usually yeah. you want to block off the mid hill, something like that. Have the sniper shot drop like a double shrapnel and right click the DP down together. But DP with with the Spirit Siphon, it's very hard to do that against that hero. Mugi, that they they're going on here. They're going to try for the counter initiate. Fisher doing decent work. Mugi still has the avalanche damage onto HYM. He gets right clicked down, and now C2I also getting shackled up, tossed into the air. Innocence can even finish this kill. There's no mana left on the Satyr. He will be able to get the stomp down onto Kaka. One more auto attack is going to do it, but. Oh, Two for man. one trade and Spectre dying at bottom. That is something that Newbie will take any day of the week. That's a that's a TI winning micro right there. That was beautiful. Wings innocence, man, the god. Yeah, he's but, uh, he's doing everything that he can, but it's yeah, not amounting yeah, yeah. to that much down here, unfortunately. Ooh, Moogie. Everybody on Newbie just keeps running up this hill. I don't really know what they're thinking or if they're thinking they are gonna get a shackle out. Looks like Moogie might survive. He's got a salve and some stick charges. He'll be okay, and at the same time, Sniper dies mid. Again, I gotta be keeping more eyes on this Earth Spirit. He's just... Diving S triple C, killing him off. Yeah. The only lane that uh, is not gonna have too much kill potential is pretty much top lane. And as you can see, like, KPI is already... He's, he's doubling, uh, he's doubling Faith CS, yeah. So this matchup, honestly, like, I, I don't know, man. It, it's a big sacrifice My to send the Pugna up here, because Pugna's a very time-based hero. You, you actually want him in a scenario where you can just Kaka running up, drops the Fisher, keeping the creeps away. Now they've got the toss. The chain stun from Newbie is unreal. And that will be an easy kill on the C2I spec. But yeah, like you were saying, the Underlord is doing amazingly. KP's even dragging the creep wave into the neutrals. Max efficiency mode for him. Oh, rotation from Death Prophet finds the kill on the Shadow Shaman. They're locking down Moogie as well. He's going to try for the TP out. And he's fine. Nicely done. This is an exercise. Oh, man. Yeah, still a lot of pressure, even though the Spectre is getting nothing. 
See, this is where I still wonder, like, Radiant if they just picked a different hero, had Pugna here at the bottom lane, Radiant instead of the Spectre, and they had a different hero on the safe lane going up against Underlord, like, I just feel like the scenario would've been that much better. Um, in the meantime, however, you can see SCC is really, really struggling, right? He's getting doubled up by the DP as well. And uh, this matchup, it's like, the Sniper can die pretty easily, Radiant even though the Sniper can get ganked for him really easily as well. So, pretty dynamic. Yeah, and looks like they will get this tier 1 tower down bottom. Successfully get that early cash flow going in. Radiant's Nobody gets the last hit, unfortunately, but fallen. still, this DP is filthy rich. Kaka's already heading into the jungle a little bit, and like you're saying, not a ton that he can do uh, on the Shaker at the moment. Well, why do you think they picked the Shaker in this game? Honestly, like, man, I think it. I think they just so saw it as like the. He's got the drain, but Moogie nice. comes around the corner, it's interrupting it. Faith Beyond's still pretty fast, though. It's locked down by the root. Two points up in the toss. Right click him a little bit. Unexpected rotation from the Tiny, but finds a great kill, and over at mid, they're looking for the Shaker. Looks like they should be able to dive him down, killing spree for the Death Prophet, S-Triple-C, does all that he can with the right clicks, but that's about it. Yeah, so I, I honestly think it's basically an Earth Spirit deterrent, in the sense that if the Earth Shaker is like camping the Sniper at mid, this Earth Spirit can never really roll in. Problem is, the presence with the Chen is too much, and speaking of Chen... Faith <laughs> get kicked back. Actually, might get this kill on the Earth Spirit. They tried to send him home, but he actually grabs it. And now Faith, can he survive? He's got 10 wand charges. Chen's tanking the tower now. Innocence will survive, but... All right, nicely played by Faith, getting that shackle off. Finds him uh, a kill. They, they screwed that up. Yeah, yeah, they messed that up. Because what him should have done is he should have just dropped the rock and kicked him to stun. Yeah, exactly. And instead, he kicked him back and didn't interrupt the channeling on the shackle. So That was a silly play. Uh, or rather, it ended up looking silly. Okay, good. Chilling out up here at top. They want this Faith Beyond kill, but Earth Spirits come TP'd in. Not on the right side of the Fisher. And Moogie just gonna retreat. Yeah, do you see his skill build? He's maxed the. Well, mostly maxed the Tristas this game. Exactly. My brothers, this is the way. <laughs> so good. Maxing Tristas yeah. is so good. Increases your farm by a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and of course presence. it's like. It, I mean, the, yeah, exactly. Like, this hero is picked for that laning presence. So why not just double down on it and then get that exponential amount of EXP and farm? Eventually, you're going to still have the avalanche cost toss combo anyway from your laning advantage. Like, you're going to be able to kill heroes, have like a level or two advantage. Plus, it still does similar amounts of damage and lane pressure as well. Like, you get more damage out of the toss. You can use it more. So chances are you're going to be harassing more. There's a lot of pluses to doing this build. Yeah. All right, we got another exorcism ready for the e-home side. They've smoked up, heading down towards bottom. They want KP if they can get him. He does have the Dark Rift. He's relatively tanky. Hood of Defiance coming off cooldown kind of soon. What creeps do they actually have? Two centaurs. No point in the silence from the DP. They're going to go for it. KP, can he make his way out of this? He's going to try. I don't think he's survivable <laughs> enough. No way. Yeah. The Exorcism is way too much damage. And uh, Innocence with those two points up in the Penitence. Easy kill. He's a. Uh, he's actually playing it correctly though. In theory, what he should be doing is playing that deep, right? Again, like look at the exorcism where it's popped. Half the duration's over. They haven't even reached the tier two. So, in terms of philosophy, it's the correct move. But you kind of wish he dark rifted a little bit earlier. Yeah, it took him a second. I, I think he probably would have still gone dead anyway, right? It's yeah. Six yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. Got a jump on the sniper at mid lane. They're gonna pop the haunt for that. They don't even need it. It's just HRM and Faith Beyond. Grabbing that kill, nice and easy. CTY wanted to get involved, but couldn't really make it happen. Oh man, that sniper hero. If you don't protect that hero, he will die every single time. Unless he's like, holding high ground outside the base. So, this hero really needs to play with the lane advantage. And unfortunately, he just didn't get it this game. Shock up. Got a TP out right this second, buddy. Oh, gonna go for the Fisher. Keeps on running, but I think he's just gonna get drained down. Can they give this kill to the Spectre? Would be nice, but no, nope, unfortunately it's gonna end up being grabbed. And now this S Triple C coming in with the TP. Is this enough damage? No, nope, Hand of God comes in. I don't think it would have been enough even without the Hand of God. And more E Home heroes on their way down. Faith Beyond and HYM are gonna come running into Moogie over here. Newbie very much wanting to defend this bottom tier 2 tower, it looks like. But they have to be careful. They get the slowdown onto the tiny. He throws out the avalanche, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. He's still running for it. He's going to get caught by the rolling boulder. Kaka coming in with the fisher, turning things around a little bit. It's Brit still surviving. He will get finished by the assassinate, so one for one. But losing the tiny, the number one net worth hero on the newbie side, that, that definitely stings. Yeah. Man, e are playing this so well, though. You see how, like, uh, they're not giving them any chance to breathe. And finally, after heroes have died... Uh, newbie can Dyer's drop the Lavrast awards on the mid tower and apply some pressure on their own, but they've just been so relentless at this bottom lane. Yeah. Is this fast enough 
for Ehome? Like, do you, do you feel like do they have a chance in the late game, or is this very much they have uh, to win? They do. They do entirely because of that Spectre pick. Keep in mind, it was the last pick of the game, and it was pretty much the ultimate counter to the strong heroes of Newbie. Because Penny and Sniper do not scale into into Spectre. That's for sure, right? But at the same time, um, they do have a degree of sense of urgency. Like they, they do want to take these tier twos down and then like maintain map control. Because the way the Spectre really finds farm is that the other players are making a lot of space and forcing heroes to show. If this Tiny gets a free Shadow Blade, for example, and just starts running at the Spectre, it's going to be pretty tough to get free farm. Yeah, As I say that, he's actually building S and Y. Yeah, I just clicked in him. I was about to ask. No blink, no shadow blade. Just kind of tanking up, more farm centric, carry centric kind of item. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this really. Because I'm I not. I'm not. It's actually destroying their timing. Because basically, what happens is SCC is pretty much a no factor at this point, right? Like this is a yeah. sniper. He's never gonna cross the river. He'll die every time. Um, he has to play in the safe parts of the map. So somebody has to go out there and make space and get some vision. And none of the other heroes on newbie want to do that, right? Does it, they have a four-position Earthshaker who can't really run into the Chen. They have a Rasta that's going to die every time. The only real hero that can do it is Underlord. And he's just he's just silly you know, running down lanes on the side lanes here, which is what he's supposed to do. But he has no team to take advantage of his farm. No team to play around. With. So all of his net worth, it, it's kind of getting negated to an extent. Yeah, And he's got no kill pressure either, right? Exactly. KP, exactly. Maybe he's not dying and he's pushing out the lanes, but it's not like anybody on Ehome has to really be afraid Exactly, uh, they're not scared of him, you know what I mean? He's not shoving anybody out, he's just shoving creeps out. So, yeah. as we can see now, Spectre, you know, with the ping-pong effect of the creep wave from the Underlord, gets his free farm under the tier 2. Yeah, gotta get this CS, but CTY... Oh. <laughs> I, I, I jinxed him, dude. <laughs> you were watching that, yeah, dude, he heard, he's like, hey, yeah. stop watching me, bro. Yeah, yeah, I gotta... <laughs> All right, we do have the Master Open Woods dropped again on the mid lane. Pretty expensive from Newbie. They've got all five heroes here. KP watching over the front line. They do have the DP TPing in. Initiation from the E home side isn't amazing either. So there's lots of yeah. just staring at each other. They do have the Earth Spirit coming over now. They're looking for Faith Beyond. Can they lock him down? The Fisher following it up. They get the toss back onto the Pugna right into the middle of the Newbie lineup. Can they burst him down? The Silence coming in actually. Yeah, they prevent Newbie from doing too much there, and they lose the Tiny in the midst of all of that. Faith Beyond was completely surrounded, but the the Geomagnetic Grip from Earth Spirit doing good okay. work. And, and finally, Mugi has recognized, and I think he's heard the call. He's going Shadow Blade. He understands yeah. and recognizes that like the team definitely needs to be able to walk out into the fog of the map. Um, as it stands, you know they took two Rasta Wars just to take down this Tier 1 mid, and um, they're smoking together as four right now to time it with the Tiny respawn. Another smoke, like if they go into their jungle, like, what are they really gonna get, right? If Ehome decide to defend their bottom tower, even without the haunt and uh, haunt as well as the exorcism, they'll save it. They want faith beyond. Pugna will die though. Come running into him, and yeah, right, Pugna. Yeah. He he evaded death on the mid lane. He has to pay it back this time around. But pretty yeah, but this heavy smoke, rotation. Though, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure if this is worth it because they have to rotate heroes back to defend this tier one. Uh, it can't just be the underworld this time. He he will die if they decide to uh, send multiple heroes. So. Can't push the bottom tier one as a result of this kill either, which means that like the kill again, it's just a kill. It doesn't really get anything out of it. TTY has actually opted for the hood, if you see. Yep. Oh, would be in some trouble. Does have the shadow amulet, and uh, that's gonna be all that he needs to survive this time around. Cores are not carrying detection, at least not yet. But they know what his plan is at this point, so probably start seeing some sentries and some dust being picked up over on the E home side. Newbie. I mean, even though they don't necessarily have the heroes for it, they're still looking to be somewhat aggressive. They come and get some wards down. And they actually head into the Roshan pit. This is a good play. I actually, I'm a, I'm a really big fan of this. Because they recognize that Haunt as well as uh, Exorcism are still down. And this is just the abusing of the timings. Yeah, this is probably unexpected for Ehome, right? Yeah. The... yeah, very good. We'll be able to get this Aegis up on... Who do you like it more on here? Mugi or SCC? I guess Mugi. I like it on right? Mugi. I think SCC is pretty useless with it. Yeah. yeah. If he dies yeah. with it once, he's going to die with it again. He's going to yeah, die yeah, again, yeah, right? Yeah, Because they're going to be on top of him, right? Yeah. And chances are, if he dies, like, during the duration that he's down for five seconds, Mugi or some of the other supporting cast will die, and there's no more fight to be had. There's so much AoE on the side of Ehome. Yeah. Ehome, I mean, they get somewhat of a trade out of this. They are going to be able to push down this bottom tier 2, it looks like. Newbie, yeah. they got the Shadow Blade Moogie coming Radiant forward. Kaka's still five. just trying to find farm over at top. He'll Radiant be coming in at the last possible moment. Attack. Now TPing in onto the tier 3, but looks like the Catapult and the Creeps Radiant's will be able to finish this one. Faith, looking for the Lockdown onto Innocence, needs to be careful. HYM 
Hits him with the boulder smash, but Ehome content that they've gotten the objective. They are just going to back themselves away and know that this is more farm for their Spectre to be... Uh, well, this is more time for the Spectre to be farming over on the other side of the map. Oh, this is uh, panning out to be quite an interesting game. I think the laning phase went as predicted. However, some of these moves that are being made, uh, they're pretty quick on the side of Newbie. Unfortunately, like some of the smokes haven't been able to translate into towers all, the, all that easily. But at the same time, Ehome, and not only are they keeping up in that work, they also have some big advantages, uh, especially from the mid lane that I wasn't expecting Ugi either. Doesn't get the full combo onto Faith Beyond. Can he finish him? No, won't be able to. And now Faith Beyond turns around. Eh, Moogie's going to be all right as well. It looks like just a little bit of an awkward engagement. Pugna getting ahead of him. I mean, the doubling the avalanche damage wouldn't have done that much. They're going to go on the sniper over at mid lane. They try him jumping in onto him. It looks like he's just already dead. Newbie even going to cancel those TPs. Know that they have no chance of saving the sniper inside this level two exorcism. But they get a trade. Radiant's Innocence dies at bottom. Yeah, but overall, this is still a huge win for um, Dire because what happens is they're gonna be able to defend this tower for sure. Exorcism may be down, but they got a huge kill in the sniper, and they also have the spectre that can haunt into the fight. Technically, this is still a power Radiant's play for them. Um, if they choose to defend the tower, which I think they should, they will definitely hold that. But maybe they just have spectre pushing out top. I'm not sure. Yes. They do have the TP coming in from the Earth Spirit. Pretty decent spam. Faith Beyond does need to be somewhat careful, but not I like think the they time should he can hold jump for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Moogie's kind of low here. Still has that Aegis. They're fighting around their wards nicely, but Ehome bringing in even more heroes. Gonna steal up some Radiant Creeps. Still taking damage little by little on this tier 1. Kaka's come down here. He's actually got a Blink Dagger now on the Shaker. I think this may have been spotted by Ehome, but they do need to be careful about how they go. Boulder Smash is going to connect, and Tiny almost losing his Aegis. Moogie not dead quite yet. Kaka looking for it, but... Uh, does see that that Nether Ward is down, and doesn't want to jump in too aggressively. His team can't really back him up either. So yeah, yeah. successful hold from Ehome, and more and more farm for this CTY Spectre. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All the meanwhile, you know, CTY was basically free farming and pressuring the other side of the map. So although he wasn't able to get any real tower damage, uh, he still brought himself to the second most farmed hero on the Nether Ward leaderboard, and... He's very happy with that as a Spectre at 20 minutes into the game. Yeah. Because once he gets this Radiance, the splash impact will be huge. Yeah, he's not even farming that quickly at the moment, right? In terms of his... He's got a little bit of speed up from the Desolate. You clear the camp in the right way. He's spamming the dagger around the place uh, while ferrying clarities. But as soon as he gets that Radiance online, that's when... That's when the real farm acceleration begins. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I will be honest though. I think he's actually farming really well this game overall. Just given the like... Uh, you know, farm is like a lot relative to like context as well as what kind of lane you started with. And he basically had no lane, right? Because all the aggression that they were putting out at bottom lane was entirely in the form of Chen and Earth Spirit rotations. And every time they went on a target, Spectre pretty much died, right? They want the so. Spectre kill. They scanned him. They have a sense that CTY is somewhere in the area, but... And Kaka is just so... He's itching to use this blink. They're actually going to be able to jump onto KP at bottom. Looks like probably not enough burst damage to bring him down in time before the Dark Rift goes off. He's created some space. He's seen four he heroes did. at bottom, so... Newbie are gonna threaten this mid tower a little bit, but S Triple C still has to be careful. And yeah, he's he's not gonna stick around there too much longer. Moogie does actually have a double damage. He's hunting for a freebie. Who's he gonna go for? Wants CTY. They're also gonna hex up onto Innocence. He won't be able to get the send back. They drop the Echo Slam, but they have enough damage. Fisher also there to follow it up. They lose the Spectre, they lose the Chen. Newbie, big rotation from them to claim this high ground. They even dropped the Master from Words to kill the Chen off. But. Yeah. No, that was a that was a very necessary play out of them. The the, the, the double damage I think uh, inspired them to go for the spectre right away as well. And if you noticed, Kaka expended the echo slam. It's a solo echo slam, so it actually does like no damage. Yeah. But uh, they 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 realized the value and importance of getting that spectre kill there. He's been farming without without disturbance for such a long time. They had to chain stun both of those heroes as well because spectre didn't like spec didn't get the hood of defiance off. If Chen had been able to pop the hand of God. Exactly, or get exactly. the send back. Actually, like, yeah. That was so well executed by, by Newbie. Yeah. So. Once again, Newbie, you know, being a fast team, if you see their wards, every single game, they have these wards past the river in some of the lanes or some of the jungles where they can play with these aggressive heroes. So, team definitely just wants to run at you for the majority of the game. And if you notice Moogie's build too, he's actually adding on to his burst by going on the Echo Saber build as well. Yeah, just kind of keep that burst relevant. Uh, probably goes into a Silver Edge later on against the Spectre. Always going to be nice to have, but... Ehome also looking to fire back somewhat. Smoking out. And Troyam doesn't quite have his Blink Dagger just yet. I don't know where Kaka managed to scrounge together the farm for his Blink. 
honestly. I mean, I saw him over at top a little bit and, and whatnot, but has done pretty nicely, uh, all things considered. Oh, yeah. Haka, you know that boy, he's a beast. Yeah. Always gets his farm, always finds a way to have impact. Definitely a very strong captain and player. Mugi shoving lanes bottom, KP shoving lanes mid. That's triple C trying to catch a little bit of farm here and there in the interim. C2I almost has that Radiance. That's going to be a pretty big timing for them. I mean, not only like we were talking about earlier, it's going to speed up his farm, but uh, also maybe gives them a little bit more of an opportunity to take a fight. This Death Prophet is very scary. Uh, yes. DT with the BKB picked up, so he's definitely eager to go and make something happen with the team, but it's just a question of whether the rest of the team is ready to back him up. Right, right. It's also a question of whether she gets the BKB off or not. If they that's decide true. to initiate on her and pop her, like, that's the fight. But at the same time, it's very hard to do that given the spells that are available on the side of Ehome in terms of saves, stuns, whatever. And it's also like the DP is pretty tanky herself now, right? It's sitting at 1800 life points, it's nothing to scoff at. Um, so she will definitely not die if she gets the BKB off. Not against the lineup of Newbie, not against the farm of Sniper. Um, at the same time, Newbie, they do have a lot of burst if they get the initiation. Yeah, this is, this is like the maximum tanky build as well, right? You go for Treads, he's picked up the 12% magic Radiant resist talent. I think attack. showing some respect to the kind of the tiny and the Radiant shaker, right? Knowing that there is that potential that you could just get full to nothing to give your team the best opportunity Radiant's to be able to counter and shape for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, most DP players actually go go for that option. This game in particular, right? Because you're, you're facing nothing but magical burst, Radiant's really, and a sniper. Yeah. Mass Serpent Woods dropped bottom. Newbie gonna find the trade. Tier 1 for Tier 1. Now looking towards the Tier 2. What are Ehome gonna do? This is a pretty big decision that they have to make. They don't want to use the Exorcism necessarily just for buildings, but they're already losing their 2 too quickly. What is the play gonna end up being? Mugi spotting out CTY over at mid. He's almost got his Radiance, just needs a couple more CS. They're still pushing up top. Kaka comes jumping in here. Actually gonna get caught by the Yules, not blinking far enough back. KP will he be able to save him? They've got the Glimmer Cape. Exorcism now gonna get popped along with the BKB, but Newbie, if they only lose Kaka for that, it might be alright. He drops the Echo Slam down. He's actually being saved by the Decrepify. The Exorcism not doing any damage. And now the Death Prophet out of the BKB might actually be in a little bit of trouble. They do have that Haunt ready to go though, and that's what Ehome kind of playing around, hoping to bait Newbie outside of the base, and Faith actually uh, gonna come forward, but maybe it's a bait the other way. Mugi trying to burst the DP. She does manage to get the Yules off. Exorcism's gonna be coming back soon. That'll heal her back up. And now the Tiny's in trouble. Nice two-man boulder smash from HOM along with the silence. Spectre comes in to clean up, and Ehome got exactly what they wanted. We'll get those kills, though. At the very least, Newbie managing to hold their high ground. That was, that I mean, was awkward. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is more in hindsight as well, but the more I think about it, the more I realize the Spectre pick's actually godly. Because what happens is, uh, Newbie's lineup, especially with the- I mean, I mainly blame the Earthshaker pick. I really don't think the hero is good here, but what happens is they were so focused on defending this high ground that they alleviated a lot of their potential pressure. And Mugi had a pretty good start, but it wasn't good enough because he was, one, unable to hold this tower, and two, as a result, had to rotate. And when your Tiny starts rotating, instead of getting free farm, his Shadow Blade gets delayed by two, three, four minutes, which that was the case here after a couple of deaths. And all of a sudden, you miss a lot of timings to salvage your mid laner's game. I think that's exactly what happened. So with the Sniper, you know, he's adding on to a BKB to his repertoire. That's merely going to delay the inevitable, in my opinion. Because he's not the hero that's going to walk out into the fog and pressure the Spectre for farm, right? He's still going to be that hero that's sitting back, waiting for the Spectre to engage and possibly kill a teammate or two, teammate or two of his with the Haunt Radiance. So this is scary for Newbie. Doing everything that they can to keep themselves in the game, keep on getting farmed. They are going to be going for the Roshan again. Their high ground is still very strong, like we've been saying. That's really what they prioritize in this draft, though. Whether they're going to be able to deal with a six-slotted Spectre is kind of now the question. They do give the Aegis over to the Tiny. They got a cheese for the Sniper. So... I don't know. I guess we have to start sizing up some of the other late game factors for Newbie. The Shadow Shaman is actually a pretty monstrous hero once you get oh, yeah. late enough. But I mean, he is he is position 5, so it's going to yeah, take face a lot. Oh, they're jumping in here right. in the mid lane. Double stun. S Triple C going to pop that BKB. Turns around. They do get the Pit of Malice out onto a couple. Earth Spirit taking big damage. Death Prophet just going to pop everything that she's got and run after Kaka. Prevent him from doing any damage in this fight. Going to Yules him up, but the DP spending a lot of time just for the Shaker kill. He's going to try for the TP out. I don't know if it's going to be in time. He gets bursted. They lose both supports. Everybody on Ehome now arriving to the fight. 
And they should now be able to continue pushing down this mid lane a little bit, though. Uh, Exorcism runs out once again. Oh, and I didn't realize, but the Innocence actually picked up a Midas in anticipation of all the things that are uh, happening, as is. Yeah. They're gonna just sit outside house, uh, outside the high ground, take all the towers, which they did. Except, I mean, barring the mid one, I suppose. And they're gonna constantly pressure the map. In hindsight as well, if you think about how a newbie snuck in two Roches, it was really nice, especially the first one. But it just doesn't matter, right? Because what happens yeah. is with this Aegis, you want to have a timing to either push towers or end the game. Like, Aegis is a game-ending mechanic in most game scenarios, especially second and third one. You just can't at this point, right? We talked about newbies high ground being strong, but if you can't kill the enemy's strongest hero in the sniper, maybe that's all you need. Yeah, and Ehom's high ground is, you know, they're no slouch either when it comes to the yeah. high ground defense. They're pushing out Sorry, I said sniper. I meant yeah, to say yeah. Spectre. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's going to be really interesting to see how this game actually develops. I thought with the way that the drafts opened, we were going to be looking at something relatively fast. Maybe not the case. Newbie, aggressive as always, smoking their way out, looking for something. They are going to try and jump on it since they don't want to use the Echo Slam for this, and they won't need to. They lock him down, but Ehom, all right, not really in a position to try and fight. They don't want to do anything too, uh, too rash while the Exorcism is on cooldown, so they are going to let Newbie come and do their thing here, but Faith Beyond is pressuring at bottom. He's going for a Dagon on this part, man, in fact. Hmm. Good build. I think all he has to do is just some burst damage, knock out like a, a Rasta or a Shaker in the fight, and it'll just become that much easier. Maybe going high ground, they're going to jump in on top of the Earth Spirit. That could be trouble. Faith is actually also getting jumped by the Chen Creeps. HYM able to keep himself alive, rolling back. Underlord's going to arrive. They drop down the Mass Serpent Wards. They are they're really huh? itching to try and take this tier 3. I don't know if they're going to be able to get too much more death profit. Still 20 seconds to go on the Exorcism. As Triple C is sitting behind the wall that's represented by his team. And they will force out that Glyph. Nether Ward's up on the high ground. They've also got vision of their own newbie inside of the enemy base. HOM trying for the catch. Won't really be able to find anything. The initiation isn't there. They've still got the haunt ready to go as well. They're just waiting for this exorcism to be ready. They don't have a blink dagger just yet either on the DP, but the Shivas might be enough to hold them here. Underlord does have another four staff. KP getting caught out. If they can just kite this fight, they might be able to do something. The haunt also coming in. They're all getting trapped inside the silence. BKB popped from S Triple C. He's trying to run out of this. He's still got the cheese. CTY now looking to run down Faith. They will lose the Aegis, and Newbie are just scattered to the winds. Moogie's going to be coming back, but looks like he'll be brought down once again. Ehom camping that out, and we'll finish him. Newbie, though, taking the fight on the dire side of the map does mean that uh, looks like they won't lose too much on the swing back. Right, right. But at the same time, you know, if they can't kill Spectre, it's still a concern because yeah. the Spectre is very content with just farming at any part of the map, whether it's her safe side or, or it's like aggressively in the enemy side. And you see SCC's farm, right? He's got the highest net worth in the game. It's partly due to the cheese in his inventory, but... He's he's still just as farmed as the Spectre, but when Spectre pops, Haunt decides to dagger him up and just right click him down. TC pops BKB and he has to do only one thing. He runs. You know, you, you can actually not sit there and fight the Spectre at all. So we've definitely got a scaling issue of concern. I've been saying it a little while for an extended period of time now, but if, if Newbie can't find a way to end, the, end this game within the next five minutes, it's going to have to go like deep late game for them to have a chance again, because otherwise Spectre is just going to have free reign in like the next 20. Spectre's about to hit that that really scary Critical point, mass. right? Yeah, you're yeah. going to get some more items, you're going to get your level 20 talent, picking up some more HP, just becoming... Yeah, that's the big, yeah, that's the deal breaker. If you remember, like, uh, there was a period of time where this hero was picked, like, every game, and then yeah. they nerfed Haunt multiple times just because of it. Uh, it was because of the introduction of this talent, like, these talents. Her talents are so good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and back Eternal when it was MV. plus HP and then plus strength. As well, oh my god! Yes, yes. You just had an ungodly like 4k hit points. Spectre just couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, radiance, and then the game is just over once Spectre gets a couple more levels. We got a uh, Eternal Envy Spectre here though. He's got the bottle uh, passed on to him from Faith Beyond. Everybody does this now, you know. They bottle up the nice. Newbie up under the high ground. They've disabled the backdoor protection through mid. Exorcism still on cooldown for 20 seconds. They want this Rax. They're getting a little bit desperate. As Triple C now arriving as well, the Glyph on cooldown for now, Newbie. They want this lane so badly, as Triple C is focusing on it, and they won't be able to stop him. Very nice smoke play from Newbie as they will claim the melee barracks, but it's just the one lane so far. CTY is farming down here. There's going to be a Dark Rift coming over to say hello, and this is all of Newbie's lineup just around the corner. They actually scan him out. CTY is on the run. Don't stop the farm. Don't stop the farm. CTY, keep on running. He pops the haunt, in fact. Oh, he what a keep god. On running. He manages to keep on manta dodging. He's running for it, and looks like he's out of there. Cost him the 
Well, kind of cost him the haunt, I suppose. But he survived. Yeah. I'll be honest, Ehome are playing this a little too safe. They don't have to be this dodgy. Like, even the top fight, even though they didn't have Exorcism, this DP can literally BKB run in for Shivas, just get some presence in the fight. As soon as newbie starts scattering, you can actually haunt in with a Spectre and kill two heroes with that double damage. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly a little shocked that they didn't go for it, but at the same time, like, that Rax doesn't matter, right? Again, yeah. newbie's biggest issue right now is whether they can end the game in the next five minutes against this uh, Ehome team or not. So do you think the mantra at the moment for Ehome is that they just feel like they win late game and so they're not feeling that rushed to to do anything like they don't they don't want to take any risky fights because they feel like all right our specter is is kind of a guaranteed win yeah more so, than more than winning late game i would say they're just waiting for roshan because what happens mm -hmm. is when rosh spawns they're gonna fight for it it's either ehome walking in newbie walking in or both teams fighting for it and i think uh, ehome will vastly come out of that, come out ahead on that exchange yeah the third rush is way too valuable for them yeah Right, getting either a refresher shard on, well, I think especially on the Death Prophet. You'd probably just give it to DP, and at that point, you do kind of solve the issue that they've been having, where they use the Exorcism to win the fight, but then don't have it to push the buildings. So if you get two Exorcisms, I mean, I think that it's, solves that problem. Yeah, I think the refresher is actually a big bonus. I just, I just look at it as Spectre just being already hard enough to kill, and a double life That's Spectre true. is pretty much going to be like. Yeah, oh. Aegis, Aegis and Cheese Spectre is very scary. Yeah. Alright, well, Spectre does have the Manta, another 2.9k gold. Are we just looking at Heart next, Scotty? What do you, what do you think? Honestly, this game, I think he should go damage. I think he actually goes, um... I mean, he's got so much HP. I would, I would say probably Butterfly or Scotty at this point. Yep. Yeah, seems, seems sensible. Looks like CTY hasn't decided just yet. 2.9k gold banked. Uh, Kaka's still been hunting yeah. around. He's picked up a shadow, but where's where is this Earthshaker getting his farm from? I, I don't really know, but Kaka's doing a good job. Maybe he's just been sniping bouncer runes around the place. Does need to be careful. Almost comes running into a dire sentry there. And we'll actually get scouted by the creep wave. CTY is just running at him, but no one really in the in the neighborhood to get the lockdown. Oops. No, as I say that, HOM's coming in, Kaka can't get the blink off, he's already used it, Shadow Blade, he's gonna get dusted, kicked off to the side, I don't quite know why, kicks him towards Faith, who now comes in with the Glimmer Cape, and HOM looks like he's gonna pay for this, perhaps, does get shackled up, they've got the heal, they've lost the Chen on the other side, Newbie just get both supports, HOM, why? Hmm, Faith Beyond, where was the dag in there, bro? When he decrepified the uh, Earth Earthshaker, I believe, he could have just dag in instead of life train, probably would have died. Yeah, he, does, he hasn't even gone for the eggs, right? So yeah. just just yeah. use your Dagon. I Why think he not? probably forgot about it, because not everybody mm. just picks up a Dagon on a daily basis. Pretty sure that's the reason. Yeah, or they thought he was just dead anyway, and then he kicked Kaka instead of the rock, and. That's true, that too, right? He, yeah, him. I guess you weren't expecting him to get kicked away like that. Yeah, that was, that was mm. very strange. I guess just the Dyer's misclick, but at the same time, you don't have to click anywhere. You don't have to click anywhere near Dyer's the enemy hero, right? To to boulder smash. So I don't really know. Faith just dropping mass serpent wards to kill shrines. Why not secure Dyer's some more map control? Numi actually continuing fallen. to shove Ehom, kind of back towards their base, and Ehom scratching their heads somewhat about how they're gonna lead off these fights. They do now have a blink on the Death Prophet, which I think has been. Uh, a missing ingredient for them for a little bit. Yes, yes, it's a pretty critical item. You just you just want to get on top or in the middle of the fray, and just sap up as many heroes as you can. Just be a presence. Once again, like this game, DP is not the main carry. The Spectre is, so you just want to give spacing and vision, provide presence. This is the Roshan that you wow. wanted them to contest, but I can't believe this. Newbie just gonna I get it for can't free. Are Ehome just giving Newbie too much respect? They're giving them too much room to work with. I think so, game? man. Like. uh I actually just don't understand, because this sniper is still at that point where if the Spectre haunts in and Mantas, the sniper will just have to run through the entire duration of the BKB. And you know what? Spectre is also going for a heart. So there, there's a lot of... I can, I can already sense a lot of fear, a lot of, uh, a lot of hesitation and reluctance playing into this lineup of newbies. Like, they, they, they actually just gave up a ton to let newbie crawl back into this game. Wow, I can't believe it. Like like I said, Newbie had about five minutes from that window where they started just pushing top relentlessly. It was pretty good. And then it's Ehome's time from that minute, like that point on towards like the 15, 20 minutes passed. So up to like the 50 minute mark this game, it should have been Ehome's time. But now that they're playing with the power play on the Aegis as well as Cheese and Refresher Orb, I, I don't know, man. 
Yeah. Definitely giving up way too much here. This is weird. Ehome are like, oh, now they have the Aegis and Cheese. Let's go play on their side of the map. Like, yeah, yeah. Why, why weren't you doing this before the Aegis was up or before Russian respawn there? Okay, they kick SCCC a little way away, but he gets the BKB off. They are going to jump in with the DP. Exorcism pops, all guns blaring, but newbie just walk away. Death Prophet's being kited. HYM with the boulder smash will open up a little bit more space. Mugi continues pursuit. They pop the haunt. Newbie should be able to disengage and kite once again. HYM is doing his best with the lockdown, but Ehome just can't really keep Newbie here. They're just playing together. All what? stacked up. CTY didn't even haunt in. He just well, Yeah, I, I, I'm so confused. There are so many low HP heroes. He literally just has to haunt in once, Manta, and haunt over to a different location. And that kind of presence al alone will like, scatter Newbie because they realize that if they can't burst the Spectre, they have to run. I'm actually so surprised at these like sequences of events. Maybe because the DP couldn't re-engage after the BKB pop, but but still, they're, they're, they're being way too conservative with this play right now. Way too conservative. Yeah. I think the other thing that I'm noticing, right, is the, just the lack of lockdown from Ehome. You go on somebody on Newbie, and then there's like three Force Stabs or, and a Glimmer Cape, and they're just out of there. They really yeah, need. That's true. They really need to figure out a way once they initiate and once they're committed. Because Ehome are the kind of lineup where if you commit, you have to commit hard. You've got ultra long cooldowns. Um, newbie not really the same case. Faith it does have the refresher shard. Doesn't have an eggs, but still double uh, double level double three, three master wards. wards. Exactly. Gonna hurt. Definitely going to be good enough to siege this high ground. They'll take the Raxus alone, even if there's a fight going on. If they're not disturbed, like, they'll take the Raxus for sure. Yeah. CTY stands as the Guardian. He does have his haunt up in 30 seconds or so. S Triple C forward onto the high ground. They're getting damage onto the Spectre. Taking so much damage. Faith also going to lock him down. They're going to try with the Earth Spirit to save him. They do also get the send back. I don't know if the Earth Spirit really needed to come in like that. Faith getting right clicked down. Death Prophet going to pop her BKB, but that's just the BKB to turn and run. BKB going to get popped from S Triple C as he looks towards Innocence up on the high ground. Two more auto attacks are going to do it. He does manage to get the heal onto himself, but. Not enough. Inspector once again caught inside of the pit. Haunt in five seconds. Exorcism in 18. Newbies set their sights onto the tier 3 tower and they will grab it. They want the sniper. He's still got the Aegis. Buyback from the Earth Spirit as C2Y just runs forward. But the Force Stabs keeping Newbie pushing backwards. Spectre hexed up. Does need to be a little bit careful. C2Y wants to reset and heal with the heart. But Ehome still can't quite get that catch. And they, they should really go here. Even against the Aegis, like, Newbie's position is so deep. They, they definitely want to commit to this fight. Yeah, okay, Exorcism's popped. They've got the haunt. This has got to be the time. Faith is going to put down the Mass Serpent Wards. That oh, might secure the no. tower while this is going on. Death Prophet goes in, but immediately gets nullified. Doesn't have the BKB getting right clicked as well as Triple C is being somewhat focused. Yes, CTY finally jumping in, but he just can't seem to lock onto anyone. He finally gets Faith, but the Death Prophet is going to get right clicked down. S Triple C finds that kill. He's now decrept. He's still got the Aegis. He might just stand here and fight this one out. He is, even in the face of the Spectre Illusions. CTY goes up onto the high ground, finishes up the finishes up the Serpent Wards, but the melee barracks is already taken, and newbie just walk away. Oh man. Spectre just not really committing to that fight at all. No, he really isn't. With 4k HP, he's actually not the one that's going in deep after spells have been used. He, he's, ba he's way too reluctant. And at the same time, I, I can kind of understand because Earthshaker is saving his kit for the Spectre entirely as well, but at this point, you just gotta go in, you know? If you don't provide spacing for your DP who doesn't have BKB and is getting nullified, like, th you're just gonna lose more heroes in the fight. And at the end of the day, no matter what hero you're playing, no matter how much farm you have, you cannot play 1v5, though. Yeah. And they don't have those spells anymore. Spec, once again, caught in the pit, getting brought down by the Firestorm. CTY runs it on the front lines now, but he immediately gets hexed. He's gonna get chain stunned up. S Triple C pops the BKB, gonna keep on right clicking. He does lose the Aegis, he needs to be a little bit careful, but he force dashes himself in. Innocence will be saved by the Decrepify. S Triple C finds the double kill. Now he looks at Innocence. Can he find the triple? They get the Nullifier over under the Spectre. She's stuck in the pit. I think this should be the end of CTY. He is still pretty tanky. They try for the send back, and they do get it. Spectre. We'll be back to this fight before too long. Sniper trying to force staff himself out of there. Newbie still kiting pretty well. Can they keep the sniper alive? Another force staff. Now the pike. He turns around. Damage onto the Death Prophet. Faith has one last shackle in reserve. They still have a little bit of mana left to give. KP with the Firestorm. Big damage onto both of the big cores. C2I just going to keep on running forward. Knows that he has to try and find the sniper kill, but now there's the Glimmer Cape. Kaka doing his best to keep S Triple C alive. He doesn't have his. Titanic for a little bit. He's just trying to life steal through. CTY should finally finish him. One more auto attack. No, the hurricane fight. Oh They're kiting so perfectly. Lord. Newbie, they just can't 
let this sniper die. Finally, C2I gets it. He retreats up out of the high ground, but KP finishes him with the Firestorm. Oh, and C2I is done. He even has buyback and haunt, and he just calls GG because they're already mega creeped. Mugi yeah, was just Mugi hitting was their just... bottom lane the entire time. Yeah. Oh my you know, god. So we've been here for three games so far for Newbie, face skip, and I must say, man, Newbie, it just at, at one point in the game, they just start outplaying the enemy in terms of decisions. It just feels like they're just one step ahead, when it, especially when it comes to Roshans. And yeah. I don't know, man, these teams are just crumbling at their aggression. Yeah. The aggressive warding, the pickoffs, the smokes into the base, securing Roche after Roche after Roche. Ehome just look look terrified. I don't know if they needed to buy like an abyssal blade on the Spectre instead of the heart, and just I mean now hindsight is twenty twenty, but they seem to be having all these lockdown problems. But I don't know the the kiting from newbie and the lack of lockdown from the Ehome side. I feel like we didn't even really see the impact of the the Pugna that much. Right, he did plenty of damage, but kind of lost the lane, and then they didn't really utilize his strengths all that much. Through the mid game, it, it to me almost looked like Ehome just weren't quite even sure how their lineup matched up against newbies, and newbies yeah, were just like, yeah, "Yeah, these are a bunch of heroes that we know how to play. We know how strong we are," and Ehome still just like looked a little bit lost, to be honest. Definitely very surprised at the outcome here. Um, and they had all the pieces to take over the game much faster. They should have been the ones that got Roshan with the Spectre as well as the Chen. But instead, they lost map control little by little. As soon as the Shadow Blade came in, and suddenly a couple smokes here and there from Newbie, you know, picking up a lot of kills, picking up a lot of towers, especially that bottom lane. Um, again, too much uh, reluctance and hesitation on using their spells, I believe. They could have taken a lot more fights with the Spectre as well as the Death Prophet. That's how I feel. Yeah, lo lots of times that the, those two big ults got popped, and then it didn't result in, in anything. Anything, really. yes, yeah. yes. And I think Newbie playing pretty well around the cooldowns. I mean, that first Roshan that they grabbed was realizing, okay, we're keeping track of the Exorcism, we're keeping track of the Haunt. They're both really long cooldowns at this stage of the game. And they just kind of walked in there with a very underfarmed Sniper, but they knew that they had the strength of the Underlord with the Firestorm. And I feel like that Roshan gold really helped kind of buoy them up through the, the early stages. That's probably even part of where Kaka managed to get all the farm that he that he had, right? He was farming a little bit. They managed to snag a couple of those tier ones with the Mass Serpent Wards, uh, but then also that Roshan Gold helping to keep the game kind of even. And after that point, Nubi made it look super easy. So I don't know. Uh, anything obvious that you feel like Ehome need to change for game two? Do you think they could have... They couldn't have continued down the all-in path this game, right? They couldn't have picked something else instead of the Spectre and just tried to win in like 20-25 minutes. I actually think uh, in theory Spectre was the back best pick in hindsight, right? Because it got them to the point where they could lose the lane, but they still had enough space to farm on the map and then eventually become stronger. Yeah. My only fear, like, honestly, this game shouldn't have been, shouldn't be looked at too much beyond the picks, like, beyond the plays, rather. Because they had the strategy, it was correct, they had the lead, and they I feel like they really botched it. So, honestly, just stick to the game plan. You know, if you have this uh, ability to get these lane advantages, you know, with the Earth Spirit Death Prophet, you can shove in the mid and destroy SCC, go for it. If you can take the bottom towers the way you did and constantly play in the jungle and apply a lot of pressure, go for it. But just make sure that you're looking at the Roshan follow-up after, because that Aegis is going to be a critical factor in whether you can break high ground or not. Yeah, they hardly got to play on the, the Radiant side of the map at all, but that's what we've been seeing from Newbie out of all of these games. They are just so good yeah. at controlling the map, even without... Even without the best split pushing or lane shove heroes, they still just seem to manipulate the map in just the right way that they can slowly hedge in their opponents, find a bit more farm, get that one pick off, and uh, go and win the game. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. We've still got one last game. Unfortunately, that now means Ehome are out uh, losing this one. They had to 2 0 this series to move forward in the DPL, so they are now eliminated. Newbie, if they win the next game, uh, they're going to claim the top spot in their group. So we still have more Dota coming up. Uh, Claire, are you going to stick it out for one more? Still adjusting that schedule? Oh, you already know. Yeah, Here awesome. to see it end. All right, guys. We'll be back in a couple of minutes for Newbie versus Ehome Game 2. Catch you soon.